So, welcome. Um, I'll hand straight over to team leader Matt Knott to uh, start the conversation. All right, great. Good morning. Uh, good afternoon, Mr. Chairman and Commissioners. Uh, my name is Matthew Knott, and I'm honored to be here today representing Toledo, Ohio Fire Rescue Department. I would just note also that this is our fourth time presenting uh, in front of the Commission. So, I would like to thank many members of our team that made a successful site visit and their many hours of hard work. They are Chief Tom Jenkins from Rogers Fire Department, Rogers, Arkansas, Captain Travis Perot from Richmond Fire and Emergency Services in Richmond, Virginia, and Chief Jerry Hardson from Jacksonville Fire and Emergency Services in Jacksonville, North Carolina. During our agency or during the review of the our agents of the agency self-assessment manual, strategic plan, and various other documents on our and our January 2019 site visit, the team identified a very proud and healthy agency that strives for continuous improvement. The city of Toledo embraces and learns from its past and it has led to a, a pathway for a stronger future. Toledo is not, however, without its challenges. Uh, many of these are typical of larger Midwestern cities where they've seen the population decrease and the demand for services continue to increase. Toledo has made great strides uh, to provide for fire sa firefighter safety and improve the services that it provides its citizens. On our site visit, we did identify some opportunities for improvement, and those are all noted in the report that's in front of you today. While on our site visit, the team was able to verify and validate that the agency's response data and, and risk assessment, and because of our on-scene visit and assessment, the team unanimously recommends the Toledo Fire and Rescue Department to the Commission for reaccreditation. Now, Chief Bird would like to say a few words, too. Good afternoon. On behalf of the Toledo Fire and Rescue Department, we would like to thank the Commission for all of your work and efforts to uh, continuously improve the services that we all provide. Again, this is Toledo's fourth time here, so we're, we're grateful for that opportunity, and we thank you for uh, getting us through this process. I'd like to thank Matt and our peer assessors. Uh, Again, this is a learning process, and they were definitely a, a pleasure to work with. I'm a, a new chief. I was put in a position on August 3rd, and so I kind of walked right into the fire, so to speak, with this, and uh, they, they made it very comfortable. Also sitting before you are our accreditation manager, Dave Dower, our chief financial officer, Verdell Franklin, and last but definitely not least, uh, representing the City of Toledo and Mayor Wade Kapsikiewicz, uh, our City of Toledo Safety Director, Karen Poor. As a department and city administration, we understand the importance of this process and the need to work with our rank and file, the IAFF, and our Toledo Fire Chiefs Association in order to strategically and collaborati collaboratively achieve our department's goals. Uh, and with the accreditation process of continuous improvement being at the fore forefront of that. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to our safety director, Karen Poor, to say a couple words. Hey. There we go. Good afternoon. Just a quick, quick statement. Uh, the City of Toledo Fire Department values excellence. We care first about the people that we serve and recognize that holding ourselves to high standards is the best way to ensure that we can continue and deliver quality safety services to our residents. We see working through a rigorous certification process like this as one as, import, as an important tool to ensure both high standards and excellence. This is the best way for us to hold ourselves accountable to each other and to those we serve. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, with that, uh, we'll take any questions that you may have. Thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, questions from Commission? Jim? <coughs> the report makes mention of the 2014 line of duty deaths of uh, brothers Mashinsky and, and Dickman. Uh, it talks about the improvement in tactics, training, and incident command. Can you speak to a little of what you've done in that area? Uh, since that unfortunate incident, uh, we have done some extensive training across our department. We have put in place what we call first do training, uh, which is uh, we have one of our training officers who has put all of our officers through just that. Training is a first do officer on how to strategically affect the outcome 
of the situation that they're presented with. We've also actually done a very uh, in-depth review of that fire and the person who did that for our department has also been recognized across the country and has to speak across the country uh, concerning that fire and what we've learned from it. And we have also put into place, uh, he's in our safety bureau, but he is off actually an officer that reviews every fire that we respond to and we quarterly sit and go through incidents in detail seeing how we can improve or, or the, the things that we did that were good at those incidents. So we are continually and, con and continuously reevaluating our operations that really stemmed from that incident. It's good to see that their loss will not be in vain. As you know, I spent about a week or 10 days there in Toledo. Yes, thank you. Uh, when that event took place and I met a lot of wonderful, committed, professional firefighters. So I'm glad to see you're moving in the right direction. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Other questions, uh, Chief Rose. So going into physicals, it appears that you have a, a fitness program, but let's speak about medical evaluations. It looks like you have members of the hazmat team, the scuba, the dive team that receive those, uh, everybody else is voluntary. What's keeping you from pushing to the mandatory piece? Because it looks like you have a funding mechanism there through insurance, but what keeps us from taking that step, making it mandatory? Uh, money. Uh, we have over 500 members, and the cost of putting people through the physicals isn't just the insurance piece. The insurance is actually funded by the city of Toledo. So that is an impact financially on the city in order to get that done. Uh, we have tried to be proactive in some other aspects of health and wellness. Uh, one of those things is we had an, uh, a health and wellness officer. Well, we are in the process right now of changing that from just being one officer to an office to include two officers. And what we're doing is we are dividing their responsibilities. One will be addressing uh, we will be proactive addressing prevention aspects and the other will be handling the things that unfortunately have already occurred such as injuries, injuries and illnesses. So we are doing what we can administratively and we are working with the city administration and the firefighters union local 92 to see what we can do to address the need for the physicals. So just, just follow up just a little bit and I understand the financial commitment of, of yes. course. Right now what kind of participation do you have of those not on the scuba or hazmat team, how many more are taking advantage of that? Taking advantage of physicals? Going to get a voluntary physical, yes. Uh, I don't have that number. Dave, are you aware of any? The exact, the exact number I don't have. Just well, we're a little different in, though, that the city of Toledo does fund 100%. We are self-funded. Fire, our fire department runs our health care, pays $6 million a year for that which is one piece, so part of that health plan, there's no Blue Cross, Blue Shield, or any other agency, it's Toledo Firefighters Health Plan, where they get a physical every year. We also have, and I, part of the city program is a wellness program where they can also go get checkups. Mm -hmm. Addition, the biggest problem we have is probably forging a partnership in the next year or two where we can get that information and look at the numbers to see what percentage of our people are taking advantage of that. We also did partner with a college in our town, and while it's not the, I, I guess, the full-blown physical that we'd all like them to have, it's the beginning of uh, a lot of stages of tests that they can take, and it's open to every member to take once a year. So I don't know if that answers the question. Oh, it does. I, I truly understand, and I'd always recommend the NFPA 1582 physical on an annual basis. Yes. Can't, can't beat it. So, thank you. Chief Droz. In the financial section of the report, it, it highlights how you've been able to increase minimum staffing. Uh, and, and one of the ways you've been able to do that is through the use of a SAFER grant. Uh, so how are you going to sustain that increase and, and what's the financial plan to sustain those positions uh, once the SAFER grant expires? Yes, we currently have a class of 47 in the academy as we sit here now. Uh, six of those members were funded by that SAFER grant. Uh, we have a commitment from the city administration to, to maintain our, our staffing levels and 
it's it's prepared for and it's planned budgetarily to do that. Our minimum staffing, our authorized strength is 525. We need more, as most departments do, and we are blessed to really have the support of our city administration in maintaining those numbers. And one of the other things that, that is plaguing communities uh, across the nation is really uh, our preparedness to to terrorist events and certainly domestic terrorism and active shooter hostile event <coughs> response. Yes. Uh, how has the department been preparing uh, to, to serve its community in, in that event? Uh, we are putting all of our people through rescue task force training now. Uh, we have actually uh, got the funding to provide the equipment, the protection, or the PPE for our people who will be assigned those duties. Uh, we are dividing it up by battalion, so we will have a couple of response vehicles in each battalion that will be able to do that, that have received the training and will be equipped to do it. And so just an interesting side note, uh, gosh, I think even before uh, the accreditation process mm -hmm. was put into place. Uh, I, I know Toledo was doing something that was called service efforts and accomplishments uh, some some time ago that that I got to look at and it was uh, the precursor of, of many of the performance measures that uh, we currently use within the service. Yes. So thank you. Thank you. Chief Thompson. Chief, uh, um, congratulations on your obviously your recent promotion. Thank you. Okay. Um, now, did you come in within or were hired outside? Uh, I've been on Toledo Fire for 31 years. Okay, very cool. So um, you've been working with your accreditation manager in some somewhere a fashion through many, obviously through these cycles. Yes. Um, how long has the accreditation management been serving? The re recommendation says quite a while. I mean, not the recommendation, <laughs> but uh, uh, you know the report. Right, 20 years. Okay, I was involved starting in the 1990s. We started in the we started looking at accreditation in the 1990s. I think we were the sixth metro department. To uh, what is your exit plan? Because the and I don't mean this in a bad way. Right. And I you know they're chuckling probably yeah he needs to split or something. But okay, um, it was it's that nobody I truly believe that nobody in the organization knows more about the department than an accreditation manager. Nope. No matter how the new fire chief comes in, get promoted outside inside. Um, but when you're talking about uh, the professional development of our uh, younger officers, and yep. when we pull chocks and retire, that you are still healthy. And that transition plan is, is uh, you know, is good. And then they work the new fire chief to death through the next edition. Mm -hmm. So, um, I guess uh, real quick, say for the first time, um, we've had two people at these meetings or going to the courses this uh, week. Uh, I think since the first uh, excellence conference, I've always attended, but it's the only person Toledo ever sent. We have two this week, but more importantly, we have Chief Franklin who's sitting next to me who has attended them, is also involved. He has a CFO application in, and uh, it is hoped that he, I will serve as a mentor for him to become the next. Don't get it wrong, I enjoy seeing you every year. Uh, we, we, also, we also have our assistant chief, John Kaminsky, who is actively involved in this process. Mm -hmm. And while Dave has been around, we have, uh, <laughs> we, we do have Chief Kaminsky as a good backup. Yes. Thanks. Thank any further questions from the commission? Mm -hmm. By the way, I, I appreciate the letter from the uh, Mr. Cassidy, the director of public safety. Any other questions? In which case, I'd ask for a motion. Uh, Chief Thompson, motion, motion to approve. Second, uh, second uh, Chief Hill. Any further discussion? Those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Congratulations, Toledo. Thank you. Dave.